you look at our next story and think, this guy is either mad or extremely brave. Perhaps he's both. It's a story of James Kingston, and no matter what you think, his exploits are truly exceptional. James is a so-called urban free climber. He scales construction cranes, tall buildings, towers and bridges with no safety line, no harness, nothing to stop him from falling. Once at the top, he performs daredevil manoeuvres and shoots selfie videos for future bragging rights. Our story is not just about this young adventurer, but also his long-suffering mum, Julie. You can guess what she thinks about all this. The plan is to climb that crane. Should be cool. How high is that? That is 300 feet, 100 metres. How long did it take you to get up there? It depends. Welcome to the new world of urban free climbing and one of its rising stars, James Kingston. We just made our way up slowly, finally got to the top and it was just, the view was incredible. The sun had just come up. Everything was just glowing orange and it was completely surreal. There was no wind whatsoever. It's not just the climb to the top, but what James does up there that puts him head and shoulders above the rest. He considers this not just a high wire act, it's performance art, captured on video. The higher, the riskier, the better. But you don't need to hang by one hand, <laughs> do you? No, you don't need to. You don't need to. But you do need to. I do, yeah. <laughs> I feel the need to. Is that your trademark? I think it's turned into it, but it's not what I want it to be. It wasn't planned, it wasn't why I climbed it, it was just part of it, part of the adventure. The high adventures of James Kingston have become his passion and his livelihood. He considers urban climbing to be a serious sport. He has a training regimen to match and he keeps to a strict diet, but at home, his life is surprisingly down to earth. He lives in a peaceful corner of the English countryside with his mum, Julie, who loves that her son has found his calling, but would love it more if he hadn't. He doesn't see himself putting his life at risk. I do. <laughs> I feel like that. Looking, looking at him, you know, I kind of feel very, I'm really disturbed by it. The only thing is, one mistake and you're gone. Yeah, it's a risky business. Urban climbing first appealed to the disaffected youth of Eastern Europe and Russia. They liked the freedom. There were no rules, no ropes, no safety gear. And then a handful of people began sharing their exploits on YouTube, trying to outdo each other, and a cult was born. How many more people in the world are there in your class? In my class? Um, as good as you. I don't know if I put myself in a No, in you're a being class. modest. You've got to be the best or close to. So I haven't really seen that many. Well, there can't be too many because, uh, quite frankly, in Europe they keep dying too, don't they? I mean, 16 people in the continent. Of, uh... In Ukraine, yeah. Today, James is heading for a new objective. He's with a Ukrainian friend who's something of an idol in the rarefied world of free climbing. Grigory Kirilenko climbs by the alias of Mustang Wanted. It's 5 a.m. and they've come to what for them is an alluring structure at the top of a 35-storey apartment building. Just asking to be climbed. This. 
and you get up and you've just got these rails that just stream out over the drop. Just incredible. I don't know why they even exist, but I'm glad they do. They're, they're really cool. It's just a, a new adventure, climbing something you've never climbed before or exploring something you've never explored. That's what I love. We don't know what's ahead, that, and that's what's exciting. Do you ever feel fear? Yeah, I feel it, yeah. I get like this sickening feeling in my in my like lower back. It sounds weird, but that's what it does to me, and it, it just kind of makes my heart go crazy. So how do you overcome that? How do you control it? This is where I am now. This is what I'm. This is making me scared. Like figure out what why it's making me scared, and then compare it to something I've done before, and be like, okay, so I'm scared of this, but. Last week I was doing that, how does this make sense? And then I just kind of talk my brain around until it realizes, yeah, you're not actually scared of this. You're just hyping it up for yourself and making it worse. Now it's Mustang Wanted's turn. He removes his shoes and the show begins. friend on the ground tips them off that the police are on their way, so they wind up the show and make their escape. Missing the point that the police might actually be doing them a favour, perhaps saving their lives. If somebody wants to go out and take a risk and they die, I think that sh should be accepted. Obviously death isn't nice, but I think what is nice is that these people feel like they can go out and, and do what they want, even if they do end up dying. Do you fear death? We all fear death. I don't... Th mm. For me, I don't fear death. I fear the lack of life. But I, I wouldn't want to leave my mum and my family behind knowing that I'd died. That's why I don't want to die. James had long been a worry to his mum. He was one of those kids who didn't fit in, and when he was 14, he stopped going to school. He was um, staying asleep until probably about 12 o'clock, then he'd get up and he'd be on the computer. I mean, he became really good at computer games. So that would be his day, that was it. I mean, all that sounds like uh, a form of depression. I don't know if he was depressed, but he was definitely very insular. He was definitely very um, isolated. He was able to, to save himself. He was able to stop the depression at some point or, or to keep a control over his life. Leading sports psychologist Dr Rhonda Cohen has studied James and the intriguing way his climbing has brought him back to life. But she worries where it might all lead. How does he control his exploits before inevitably they kill him? Controlling addiction is very difficult because it, it, it takes the point at which somebody says, OK, I've had enough, I can, I can now maintain this instead of taking it further and further. Not everyone finds that. Oh! Some people keep on going, becomes a numbers game, and they'll go in, in, until their death. Coming up... You'll bloody die, that's what I'm worried about. A mum's desperate plea. So I'm asking you to stop. And James discovers his limits on the mother of all climbs. Scary, dude. It's next on 60 Minutes. James Kingston is a veritable king of the death-defying endeavour known as urban free climbing. It's the breathtaking pursuit of illegally climbing absurdly high structures, only to do even more absurd things at the top, begging the question, why? 
to understand, we walked across sodden fields into his teenage winter of discontent. I'm getting a feeling we're going back to where everything started. Yep. James took me deep into the gloomy Hampshire woods near his family home to an ancient oak where, as a 15-year-old, he discovered another world. This is it? This is it. This is the homely tree. How far up there did you climb? We went right to the top. And some days I'd sit up there for hours and just, for long enough, like, for all the wildlife to come back out and I could just watch them. So if we wanted to unravel your complicated brain, this is where we'd start, eh? Yeah, this is it. From the treetops, James's quest to escape the gravity of everyday life led him to rooftops, walls and balconies and the strange world of parkour, or free running. One rooftop led to another and ultimately to climbing those lofty heights. When the local sites in England fell a bit short, James looked abroad. Last year, he climbed a crane in Los Angeles, and that's when his mum, Julie, tried to ground him. You don't think that you're going to die doing this. This, this is totally extreme. So I'm asking you to stop, actually. You'll bloody die. That's what I'm worried about. It's like completely going against what I want to do if I were to stop it. And I would, I would be completely lost. I'd be like, what, what do I do? This is boring. I always, I need more. It's terrifying me, absolutely terrifying me. Yeah. It all fell on deaf ears. Soon after, he took off again to meet his kindred spirit, Mustang Wanted, in the Ukraine. The plan this time, to conquer the Moskovsky Bridge in Kiev. He wanted to climb to the apex of the pylon and do a backward somersault. Does he tell his mum before or after the stunt? No, only afterwards. These cables are disgusting. They just wobble. Wow. Once at the top, James realised how tiny was the stage on which he'd have to perform his daring stunt. And he experienced a rare moment of terror. He actually really sort of had to think about what he was going to do, because I think it was the first time that he thought about maybe he was going to die here. <laughs> I could do it with my eyes closed if it was on the ground. Scary, dude. So I'm, I'm stood there and I'm, my heart's going mad, my brain's driving me crazy. And I just need to stop. Why am I scared? I shouldn't be scared. And then I can just, I just take control of it and then it's gone. But one slip, and he'd fall 120 metres to the road. And to make matters worse, the police had spotted them. James, James. Police приехал. Yeah. Ты видишь, давай спит. Пью, стартишка, и мы так туда. Yeah. Давай. Yeah. Все. And I felt quite, quite relieved that he actually felt scared at something. He doesn't normally feel scared at anything. No, we're getting somewhere then. Yes, that's what I thought. That's what I was hoping. I thought, oh, thank goodness. This is just a start, you know, it's a start. The Ukrainian police must have felt some grudging admiration for the daring duo, and they didn't arrest them. James was able to head home to his mum. And you find people saying to you, 
What kind of mother are you? How can you let your son do something <laughs> like this? I'm sure there's a lot of people say that. And there's a lot of me says that as well. How can I let him do this? I can't really put him to bed or send him to his room or it just, you know, realistically, I've got no control over what he does. He makes his decisions. But you love him and you're proud of him. Oh, very proud, yeah. I would love him to bits, you know, he does my head in. Because <laughs> I can't get him to stop. We took James back to the crane in Southampton that had made him a YouTube hero. Yeah, you recognise them? Now there's a new safety barrier ensuring it can't be climbed again. And guess who designed it? James Kingston himself. And you can't get through that? I can't get through that, no. Yeah. <laughs> so what you've done is you've stopped other people hurting themselves who don't have your skills, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you have protected your victory forever, haven't you? I guess, yeah. No one else could do it. That's not what I wanted to do, but yeah, I guess I have. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.